You know when you clicked on that single mom's Nimri link and the file started downloading and you ran it and nothing happened? Have you ever thought about what's happening on the other end, on the hacker's end? Because it was probably a hacker, not a single mom. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating exactly that. I'm going to be showcasing the Havoc framework, which is a modern open source command and control post exploitation tool. It consists of two main components, the team server, which manages all the communication with the compromised systems and handles the task and data coming from the agents. And on the client, a user-friendly graphical interface that allows the operator to interact with the system. Before we begin, just remember hacking is illegal and it should never be done to harm anyone. In front of me, I have Kali Linux and I have the Havoc documentation page pulled up. And right here in the installation page, we're going to go through and follow along. First, we're going to git clone it. Then we're going to install the dependencies. After that, we're going to install the, we're going to build the team server, which I talked about. And then to finish it off, we're going to build the client. So first we git clone into the Havoc framework repo, Havoc framework slash Havoc dot git. So we copy this, go to our uh, terminal, paste it in, git clone. After that's done, we just go into the directory by doing cd havoc ls. Here we can see all the files. And then next we install the dependencies. Here it says for Ubuntu, Kali, Debian, Arch, macOS. So you can basically install this everywhere. But remember, you must enable Python 3.10. Let me check if I have that real quick. We open a new tab, Python dash dash version. I have Python 3.13, so I'm good to go. So here I copy the Kali one because I'm running Kali Linux. Copy and just paste it, in, paste it in. Super simple. Give me my password. By the way, I forgot to mention the load of dependencies might take a while, so go take a drink or something. And after it's downloaded, go to the top right corner and you need to restart your system because of the dependencies. So after you restart your system, remember to CD into Havelock again so we don't mess up anything up. Now we need to build a team view, team server. Install additional Go dependencies. We need to go mod download goland.org slash x slash sys and go mod download github.com slash u go rji slash go. So first we cd into team server. Let's just paste this in team server. Then go mod download golang slash x slash sys. We run this. Now go mod download github.com slash you go or rji slash go. That's kind of hard to say. Okay, so after that's done, let's clear this up. Now let's go back to the installation page and right here, run the team server. Dot slash havoc server. Then we have a profile. Havoc dot yaotl. Now this is where we make the profile. And what we're going to do, we're going to go into this file right here. Let's copy this up. And now you can choose your favorite text editor, gedit, nano, mousepad, doesn't really matter. For me, I'm going to use gedit. Now we paste this and then we need to move the, do we need to remove the slash in front? Remove. And right here we have a file. And right here we have operators. Spider, password one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then user new. I'm actually going to change the user. I'm going to type who am I Tang. I'm going to type in my own name. Then password, let's just type admin. And all I'm going to do here as well. Who am I Tang two and password admin two. And we're going to save this. And now what we have to do next is actually just run the team server. So we copy this, go back to the terminal and paste it in. That's it. Okay, now the server is up and running. There's no problem. And now we go back and now we need to build the client. It's pretty straightforward. Make, we need this, let's copy this up, make client build, then dot slash have a client. We go back, we open a new tab, a new terminal. Just make this big. And then let's do ls, let's see all the files. Here we have the files and then make client build right here, which one. Okay, so that did take a few minutes, but here now it's done. Here we can see all the files that were built. I found this cool because it tells you every single file that was built. And now all we have to do is do dot slash havoc client. All we have to do is that. Now it's running. Here we have name. Let's name it who am I tang. Okay, now the host. It's just supposed to be your local host 127.0.0.1. Now the port, if we go back to the earlier tab, right here we see a port. 456. Now we have to type that in. 400, 456. User. Remember we changed the user before, so for me I did who am I tang and then admin. And then we hit connect. Right here, we did it. Okay, so the client ran successfully and right here we have the graphical user interface I was talking about earlier. And in the top left corner here, we get all the devices that we successfully connect to. Here again, we get the ID, the computer, the OS, the process, everything. And the top right corner, we have the event viewer. Here, here are the logs. 
And then down here at the bottom, we have the team server chat. Right here, we run all the commands the, to the devices we connect to so we can remotely control it. Okay, so next up, we need to set up a listener on Havelock. So when we send the malicious file to the victim and they run it, their system requests the connections to us and the listener will be like, yeah, that's exactly what I was waiting for. Estab establish a successful connection so we can get full remote access to their system. To set up a listener is super easy and simple. We go to the top left corner right here and click view listeners. So here, then we click add at the bottom, create a listener, give it a name. I'm gonna name it who am I tang HTTP. Then change the payload from HTTPS to HTTP. Then the host blind. This is the direct entry point. This is my kind of Linux IP. Then the port blind. This is the port, the port where this connection is gonna be sent to. I'm actually gonna change it because my Apache 2 server might be running and I don't want to uh, interfere. I'm gonna change it to 1337 to a port that's not occupied. I'm gonna change this as well, 1337, user agent, blah, 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 doesn't matter. All we have to do is click save and it's done right here. Save. And here we can see started, who am I tang, HTTP listener. Next up, we need to set up a executable for the victim to run. We go to the payload tab and then we need to select the agent daemon. Fun fact, daemon is written in C and assembly, which is kind of cool. So we make this send to the victim, they press execute, they connect to us, and then we have full remote access to the system. So let's go ahead and do that. We go into attacked, payload, Right here, payload agent daemon, listener who am I tang HTTP is already selected, arch x64 format Windows executable, and we just have to hit generate. Right now it's compiling. After it's done compiling, it's going to ask us to put it in a direct in the specific directory, and then we can put that payload into a web server so the victim anywhere can call it and download it. Okay, so here now it's asking for us to save it. I'm going to save it into payloads. So I'm here to access. So I remember, I right, save. Now it's saved into under a uh, home who my tank havelock payloads daemon.x64.exe. Okay, so next up, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a new terminal, control shift T to make a new terminal, to make it bigger, and then cd into uh, payloads right here, ls. Right here, we have a file daemon.x64.exe. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna host this file into a Python server. We do a python dash m http.server. I'm gonna put it at port 8000. Right, we have our uh, server running. I'm gonna go to our victim machine, to our Windows victim machine, and we're gonna execute the file. Now in our victim machine, we need to call the malicious file, and we do that by going to our Python server we just made. And we have to type our Kali Linux IP, mine is 192.168.178.65 on port we specified on the Python server. I specified port 8000. Enter, and right here we have the payload, all the files from the payload uh, directory. Here we have our file daemon x64. EXE, we click and download, keep, you run it, and right here, it's loading. Here it looks like nothing happened, but when we go back to the Havelock client, right here, we have it. User tangent, we click on it, right here. We can run any commands. Let's, let's type a help, let's see what commands we're going to run. We can run all these commands, every single one of these commands we're going to run on the computer. We can run a screenshot, let's run a screenshot. That sounds like a fun one. Screenshot, send test to the agent, 12 bytes. We wait for it. We hey, definitely took a screenshot right here. To see it, we go on view, we go on loot, desktop, and right here, right here, we have it.